Hi, it's Matt with Custom Car Grills. This video is for the Dodge Dart upper grill mesh install that removes the factory crosshair. Here's a quick look at the finished product. It's a very sleek style and I'll show you how we did it right now. For this I'm using a stock SXT model. The first thing is to prop up the hood and remove the plastic push rivets that hold on the upper splash guard. A handful of 10mm bolts are also removed from this area and set off to the side. Next, one 10mm and three 8mm bolts in the wheel well need to be removed. And then eight 8mm bolts on the bottom are all that are remaining. Next, disconnect the shutter and fog light wiring harnesses and give a gentle tug up and out to remove the bumper. The foam block on the back of the grill can be removed. Two 8mm and two 10mm bolts as well as some clips hold the shutter assembly on. And next the lower grill can be removed. Then the crash bar cover and upper grill bezel can come off. A couple of 10mm bolts on each side of the upper grill now need to be removed before detaching it from the bumper. The upper trim piece can now be removed and then the crosshair and dodge emblem are the last parts to come off. Now we're left with the piece that we're going to be modifying and then reinstalling back on the car. This factory piece can be purchased ahead of time at a Dodge dealership to reduce downtime for doing this mod. The first modification to this grill is going to be on the passenger side. Three tabs are protruding on the back edge and I'm going to use a Dremel with a cutoff wheel to remove them and then sand it smooth. To our knowledge, these tabs don't serve any function and impede on the mesh installation, which is why they're being removed. Then I'm going to take a look at the inside of the upper edge of the grill, where the plastic mesh meets the solid border. There's a well-defined line which can be used as a guide for where to make the appropriate cuts. The lower edge has a similar line that can also be clearly seen. A safer but more tedious route is to cut the mesh off from the front. When cutting the mesh off from the front, we could retain the full depth of the grill edge, but it would involve a lot of sanding to get it smooth. On top of that, we'd also need to paint the cut and sanded areas. On this specific install, we needed to choose the quicker path. A cut line on the back of the grill is quick and easy, but we do run the risk of cutting off too much, which can lead to a gap in the area indicated here. Against a black bumper cover, any gap like this will blend in fine. Now it's time to start cutting using our trusty Dremel with a cutoff wheel. I'm simply cutting along the line that was previously shown and it's important to keep a steady hand and not cut too deep. With it cut all the way around, the center portion should be easily removable. Next we're going to pick off any large plastic bits that were left on the cut line. To smooth out the rest of the cut edge, I'm going to use a sanding drum. It's important on this step to get a well contoured line because this part will be shown when the grill is reinstalled. Once we get the contour just right, then I'm going to sand it smooth by hand using some sandpaper. Something 240 grit or finer will work just right. Now it's time to check out the mesh piece that we have available for sale. All the correct cutouts have been made to accommodate for the bumper tabs during reinstallation. Curving the mesh to match the shape of the grill will also make installation a bit easier. Once it's curved correctly, it should drop right on the back of the grill with all of the cutouts in the correct spots. Then I'm going to temporarily cable tie the mesh to the grill. We need the mesh to be firmly held in place for some of the upcoming steps. It's important not to under or over tighten the ties because we don't want any gaps or distortion. Next, I'll cut off the tail ends of the ties. And now, let's check our work thus far. I'm looking to make sure all of the cutouts line up where they should be. In this case, everything seems to check out alright. And then I'm going to flip it around and check the back. Here, I'm looking to make sure that the ties are tight and that there aren't any gaps. Again, it looks good, so now let's move on to the next step and we'll get this mesh affixed to the grill. I like using automotive goop for this type of installation. Using a toothpick as an applicator is helpful because it'll allow me to accurately place the adhesive where I want it to go. I'm applying an ample amount of the adhesive because we want the mesh to hold on there really well. 
This specific adhesive takes about 24 hours to cure. It's best to plan the installation accordingly. I let this sit for a day, and then I came back and cut the ties off. The mesh is bonded to the factory grill now, and seems to be holding in place quite well. This completes the mesh installation portion, so let's take a look and see how it came out. It seems like all of our hard work is going to pay off. This looks really good, and it's not yet installed on the vehicle. Reinstallation of the grill is the reverse of how it was removed. Now let's check out the final product on the car. Wow, what a huge difference this makes. I really like how this turned out. For anyone looking to get rid of the crosshair and the upper grill of their dart, this is a must-have mod. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions about it or any of our other videos, feel free to contact us.